All right, today we're going to talk about an anabolic and catabolic state and its effect on our health. And um, I should also mention that there are negative downsides to calorie restriction, you know, trying to attain a longevity through lowering the amount of calories in your diet. Um, because not everything is beneficial. There's pros and cons to everything. So before I get into that, let's first understand what anabolism or an anabolic state is. Okay, Anabolism is the process of building up organs and tissues, simply put. In terms of fitness, we refer to anabolism when we talk about gaining muscle or building muscle. When our bodies are in an anabolic state, the body has all the things necessary to build new muscle molecules from smaller molecules. It is a state we want to be in as much as possible. This doesn't just mean getting big. An anabolic state is required to simply repair your muscles after enduring exercise. And the opposite of that is the catabolic or catabolism. Catabolism is the exact opposite. It is the process of breaking down larger molecules into smaller ones or breaking down organs and tissues into smaller molecules that can be used for other functions and also cellular waste. You know that soreness you get after working out? It's from lactic acid. And you know how lactic acid is created? As a waste from the catabolism of your muscle during the workout. Not good. Or is it? Catabolism is good to an extent. It triggers anabolism and the repair of the muscle to be stronger and larger. So if you are really sore, it means you really did a number on your muscles. And as long as you're getting the proper nutrition, they will be rebuilt to be better than before. However, too much of a catabolic state cannot, can be a very bad thing. When the body is overly catabolic and it doesn't have the proper resources from the diet, example, not eating enough, to make muscle repair, the body will actually break other undamaged muscle tissue down in order to repair the damaged muscle tissue. This gets you nowhere. In short, we want to avoid a catabolic state. And uh, this is important because they have shown that people that are in the catabolic state for a really long time, you know, people restricting their calories all the time, um, have a lower bone mass. Okay, their bones aren't as strong. So, you know, if you got to be 90, 100 years old, but you're, you know, skinny as a uh, pencil, you know, what good is that going to be when you're running into all these other health problems as a result of a catabolic state over all those years? So, I mean, you shouldn't look at anabolic, anab an anabolic state as a bad thing. We actually should want to be in an anabolic state. And that just means, you know, that we're giving our body the food, the resources that it needs to rebuild and keep us strong, you know, and repair our organs and our muscles. Because you don't want that stuff to get weak and, you know, be destroyed. So, but on the other hand, a catabolic state is important too. They're both important processes in the body. Now, <clears throat> one thing you may run into is by eating more calories, you know, eating more fat, more protein, more carbohydrates, you will put yourself and push yourself into an anabolic state. But you may run into other problems such as acne outbreaks, uh, you might suffer a little bit of constipation, you know, you might have some of these minor health things. Uh, doesn't mean that you're pushing yourself in an uh, unhealthy direction, it's just a result of more calories because the more calories you have, the more hormones and things that you're producing as well. So, you know, so don't be surprised if your skin may break out or something like that. Again, it's not it's not saying that you're unhealthy or anything. It's just because those are the processes that have to take place. Um, so that's one important thing to understand. So. Basically, the, the point of this video is that we should try to get ourselves into an anabolic state, but we should try to get ourselves in an anabolic state by eating clean. I notice a lot of people out there making videos will talk about this, you know, and they'll talk about how stupid calorie restriction is and all this, 
but they will recommend getting into an anabolic state by consuming junk food in a standard American diet, which is absurd because we know that a standard American diet and all those foods contribute to heart disease, cancer, aging, you know, and everything else under the sun. So if we want to get into a healthy anabolic state, we should do that with healthy whole foods, whether that be from the animal kingdom or the plant kingdom. Um, I believe that if someone was to choose foods from the animal kingdom, they're going to get a lot more, uh, you know, bioavailable protein, if you will. Um, there's other nutrients in certain animal foods that we're going that are going to help your uh, levels of hormone production, like testosterone, which is important um, for growth. So, <clears throat> you know, there's benefits of including certain animal foods uh, into your diet. It's not to say that you can't get to an anabolic state on plant foods alone, because you certainly can, and there's vegan bodybuilders that do. All I'm saying is that if you're looking to improve your overall nutrition and health, I believe that it would be wise to include it and encompass you know, a wide variety of food from both animal and plant kingdom to get you a good, well-balanced nutrition so that you can have optimal growth you know, of your body. So, um, with that being said, you know, try to include more calories into your diet, um, and remember to eat clean, eat whole foods, okay? Get your protein from things like hemp seeds, chia seeds, uh, brown rice protein, um, you know, you can do peanut butter. I know I said I've talked about peanut butter causing acne, and it can cause acne in some people. It's just that when you start raising your fat intake up higher, it's going to produce more hormones. Those hormones can trigger more um, skin oil, you know, which can cause pimple outbreaks. It doesn't mean that you're unhealthy. It's just the result of your body performing necessary functions. I mean, you see people go on uh, these bodybuilding diets, you know, and their face will light up. I believe one reason that they really light up is because they're eating or drinking pasteurized homogenized um, milk. Now, while it's true that raw milk did make my face break out, not to the extent that normal dairy would in the store. Um, raw milk is certainly healthier from a natural, you know, perspective, looking at it from that point of view. It's much cleaner in that respect, not in the sense that it doesn't have as much pus, but in the sense that, you know, it's a more wholesome traditional food, which is less likely to have a negative impact on your body. So, um, so one thing that we can understand is that, you know, when these people are working out, you know, and they're getting bigger and stuff, um, they're doing it really in a healthy way because, you know, they're consuming all the standard American foods and everything. It'd be better for people to try to get into this anabolic state using whole foods, okay, and, you know, consuming animal foods from grass-fed animals, things like that, you know. And uh, once you do that, you're going to give your body a rich supply of nutrition in order to remodel and rebuild bone as well. One of the supplements that I just was able to get was uh, Bone Renewal from the Synergy Company. It's an excellent plant-based, whole food plant-based um, mineral supplement that basically has all the nutrients in it to rebuild and remodel your skeletal system. Everything. Because you're, you're, cause you're our whole skeletal system replaces like every year, or every seven years, I believe. So, you know, using that and taking cod liver oil, which has those fat-soluble vitamins, will basically take the minerals in the plant-based mineral formula and bond them into your bones, but you should be doing that while you're in an anabolic state because then you'll have the most benefits possible. So, you know, if you can do this, then you're going to have benefits when you're a lot older. But if you stay in a catabolic state now, until you say you reach 60, 70, 80, um, a result of that could be a lot of other health problems that you might run into. Um, 
but you know you got to choose your foods wisely when you're planning on going into the anabolic state so if you if you have other health conditions or you have um, let's say um, external things you know say like you have hair loss or you have acne then don't choose those foods that you know would aggravate that condition um, to a greater degree so say you know if you ha if you're suffering with male pattern baldness or you're suffering with acne um, you wouldn't want to use milk more more or less to push yourself into the anabolic state because it's just going to worsen those symptoms unless you don't care you know unless you're not really vain and then go ahead and by all means do that but you know if you're wanting to try to slow down the other things like your hair loss your acne and whatnot then try to pick other foods that can have less of an impact on that but still try to push you in that right good direction so you, it kind of takes a little bit of strategy and planning in order to do this um, so that you can keep all things in check you know there's like a good check and balance between things um, you know if you notice you're consuming a lot more animal products and you start getting a little constipated then you know back down a little bit on that increase more of the plant proteins and get a little bit more fiber in there and it should resolve that um, digestive issues you're having but again the main point of this video is try to keep yourself in an anabolic state you know, and that will require you consuming more calories, or at least a little bit more, I'd say 200, 300 calories above what your normal calories are to maintain your weight. So, you you know, you're steadily giving yourself more growth. And it also usually requires about 1 gram of protein per body weight, sometimes up to even 1.5 or 2 grams. But I wouldn't say you have to go that far, as long as you get in about 1 gram. Um, that's going to push you in a state of growth in an anabolic state, which is going to be excellent too if you're trying to um, rebuild bone mass and muscle. So th this, again, this is an awesome way too to keep yourself a lot stronger, prevent fatigue. Um, and my other theory is that if you start including more calories, you know, and you're doing the extra protein and you're pushing yourself in this anabolic state, and you had uh, previous wrinkles and things on your face by by be, by becoming bigger um, your whole body's going to become bigger so if your face actually becomes bigger then you're not going to notice those wrinkles and stuff as much because your face is going to go whoop I've seen that happen with some people and they basically look younger which is a good thing so you know don't always assume or equate you know a thin face with health because that's not always accurate you know um, you can modify and, and change your diet around like this in order to even you know correct cosmetic uh, things that you might want to fix you know so such as the wrinkles and things so basically you're just putting on a lot more mass you know you're you're creating new body tissue you're creating new skin you're creating new flesh if that makes sense so, with that, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you like it, please like, favorite, and subscribe, and I'll see you again in my next video. Take care. Bye.